Welcome to part 10 of Zinc Ultra Scale Plus and Peta Linux. This video is about FPGA pin assignment, through which we also look at pin assignment for LVDS interfaces and also briefly high speed interfaces like PCI Express. This video is in parts supported by Blickfeld. Blickfeld is a LiDAR creating company here in Munich. You can see an example point cloud generated by their LiDAR here. What I want to do in this video is first of all to look at the pin assignment for our ZCU 104 design. And then very briefly, I want to look at other topics related to pin assignment like pin assignment for PCI Express interface, or like pin assignment for a MePCSI to RX interface. So what's pin assignment? If I take the Vivado project that we have for ZCU 104, the design, the Vivado design that we have, it has a set of interfaces. These interfaces, they need to get connected to FPGA pins. The process of pin assignment is to define to which FPGA pin each of these signals should be connected. If I want to do pin assignment, all I need to do is to open the elaborated design or to open the synthesized design or to go through a run of place and route and open implemented design. So I go with the simplest. I open the elaborated design here I have basically the package of the device that I am using. Here I have all of the ports and each of them need to be placed on one of the pins in my package. This can be a very simple, straightforward procedure. At the same time, it can be very, very complicated. It really depends on your project. For our case here, for these GPIO LED signals, which I have already done the pin assignment for them, the pin locations directly come from the document. Basically, I, I look at the ZCU 104 document, I see to which FPGA pins the, the LEDs are connected, and then I use those pins here for my pin assignment. As you remember, for ZCU 104, through the pin mode connector, we were connecting the I2C and SPI interfaces to Z board or to NVIDIA Jetson AGX board. Here is one ZCU 104 user guide, the section related to P mod and user IO. Then I have looked at this table and decided for which of SPI pins that I have, which of FPGA pins should be used. And now if you look at the pin assignment that I have done, there is only one important port that you need to take care of really for the pin assignment and that is the SPI clock. The SPI clock inside our FPGA logic is used as a clock. It drives the clock input of flip-flops of my SPI interface. So it's a good idea if for placement of this pin I use a pin which is clock capable. For all of these pins I have here, I am putting the pins on these two banks, bank 88 and bank 87. The reason why I am doing this is these are the two high density banks available in this device. High density banks are capable of supporting LVCMOS 3.3. The other banks you see here, they are high performance banks and basically they are not capable of supporting this iOS standard. Now, for example, when I want to talk to Z board through SPI interface or when I want to talk to NVIDIA Jetson through SPI interface, I want to use 3.3 volt signals. That's why you see interfaces, they are using these two high density banks. For the SPI clock port that we have here, 
I want to select an FPGA pin which is clock capable. I have looked among these pins which one is connected to a clock capable pin. And then I have chosen that pin for the SPI clock. Now if I look at these pins here in this IO bank, I can identify which pins are clock capable and which pins are normal IO. As you see, clock capable pins have a different shape. If you look at the pin names, you can gain more information about the pins. For example, if I want to have a LVDS signal connected to pins of this bank, then I need to connect them, connect that port to a LVDS pair. If I look at these two pins here, for example, one of them is IOL2N and the other one is IOL2P. These are a LVDS pair. This is L1N, L1P, L3N, L3P, L4N, L4P. When you have a clock input coming into FPGA and it's the LVDS signal, then for the clock ports, we have the same story. L2N, L2P. Pin assignment can be a very challenging task. Basically, pin assignment sometimes cannot happen without the main Vivado project available. Here's an example. We, we need to have a design which contains basically three PCI Express interfaces, one of them Gen 2 interface, the other two Gen 3 interfaces. The design should contain one PL side DDR4 2400 interface, one 100 gigabit Ethernet, four gigabit Ethernet, 12 MIPI PCSI, two RX interfaces, each four lane, four SPI interfaces, two CAN interfaces, four I2C interfaces, and a lot of GPIO interfaces. Your device has something near 1500 pins. Now, how do you come up with a correct arrangement for pin locations? How do you make sure that these pin locations will work in the final design? The fact is you can never do it without having a design available. Basically, you need to create the main design along with the pin locations. Here are some more examples. I have created a Vivado project with a MePCSI2 interface. This is an IP block which basically receives the MePCSI signal from outside. Now I have configured my IP block to have four MePCSI lanes and one clock lane. The important fact here is that you need to use the pins of a high performance bank for the CSI interface and then for the pins of the high performance bank you need to use a special arrangement of the pins the interesting fact is the pin assignment here gets done inside the ip configuration that's you don't do it in your constraint file or in the elaborated design you do it inside the ip configuration you can override it inside your constraint file but the original pin assignment happens here. If I, for example, look at the FPGA device available on ZSU 104, I see that this device has several different IO banks. As, as we described, two of these IO banks are high density. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, six high performance banks. These guys have more capabilities than the high density banks. For example, they support digitally controlled impedance. That means if I have an interface to the pins of this bank, the termination for this interface can happen inside the FPGA. It doesn't need to happen on the PCB. At the same time, these banks do not support 3.3 volt or 2.5 volt signaling. Now here on this side, we have high speed serial IO interfaces, the banks related to basically the GTH blocks that we have on the FPGA. 
Now these banks can be used for example for a Gen3 PCI Express interface as we will see in our future videos when we connect the ZCU106 to NVIDIA JETSON board. Now when, when I have a PCI Express interface inside my design then I can, I can use basically these banks for the connection of this, that, that PCI Express interface. The big question would be which bank gives me the best timing. This is a simple Vivado project which contains a PCI Express block. I have configured my PCI Express interface to be Gen3 and X4. That means the PCI Express interface here, it will contain four lanes. So I have this PCI Express interface here and I want to do the pin assignment for these ports that I have here. Let's open the elaborated design. Here is the open elaborated design and here I have the PCI Express interface and I want to define for each of these ports a pin location. Now all of these IOs can be used. All of these banks can be used. The question is which one is the best? With which one I will have the best timing? If I look, this is the package of my FPGA and this is the device. This is basically the silicon behind the package. The IOs from the silicon are connected to the pins of the package. If I look at my block design, if I look at the configuration of PCI Express interface, I'm using, between the two available PCI Express blocks, I'm using the X0Y0. So inside the elaborated design, inside my device, varies the PCI Express X0Y0. If I look at my package, I can find the PCI Express block X0Y0 here. And if I look at this one, this is X0Y1. Now, if I look at my silicon, if I look at this area, I can see the GTH blocks. The GTH blocks I am seeing here, they belong to bank 223. If I look at my package, the bank 223 is here. So if I want to have the nearest, shortest pass between my IOs and the actual PCI Express block, then it's a good idea if I put the pins on the bank 223. Now I can also put the pins here. What will happen then? So this is bank 228. If I look at the silicon that I have, I can find where is 228. If I zoom out, 228 is here in the silicon. 223 is here. So 223, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. My PCI Express block is here. So it's a good idea if for this PCI Express block I use IOs for 223. 